the United Nations women have called for more inclusion of women in governance in Nigeria. The UN Women Country Representative to Nigeria and ECOWAS, Comfort Lamte, says there is a need to ensure more women are elected into political offices in the country. Lamte expressed worry at the continuous discrimination of women and the lack of inclusion, saying there is a need for Nigeria to legislate to ensure this guarantees women participation and inclusion in politics. We appointed a gender and constitution expert to work with the technical team um, of the constitutional review process and to support in the formulation of some of these gender bills. At the same time, at the invitation of distinguished Senator Olujimi, we have also, over the last 18 months or so, been supporting another process, which is to uh, facilitate the passage of the Gender and Equitable Opportunities Bill. Uh, many of you know that in December last year, uh, that bill was stepped down uh, in the Senate. And oftentimes, uh, people have raised the, the, the question of how are these two processes linked? Why are we on a two-track approach, so to speak? I believe that the uh, Gender and equitable, equitable Opportunities Bill is actually the, the overarching bill to support domestication of CEDAW in Nigeria. Uh, CEDAW being the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. So that addresses all forms of discrimination from education to employment to violence against women and to representation of women in politics. And some of these uh, bills that were rejected on the first of of uh, March, including the special seats bill, also uh, speaks to the question of affirmative action or temporary special measures to allow more women to be uh, elected to political office. So in, in a sense, the two processes are complementary, uh, with the Gender and Equitable Opportunities Bill being the one that is overarching. So we've had two setbacks in the last two or three months the stepping down of the Gender and Equitable Opportunities Bill, and we still uh, supported those bills in the constitutional review process, which, as we saw in, in, on the 1st of March, were not uh, passed. And we continue to believe as UN Women, and we believe that because of evidence, and because of evidence and the support that we have been given globally to countries that are um, supporting reform processes, that it is through the legal process that we can best guarantee and sustain uh, women's representation in office. Um, we have seen evidence of that and supported that in countries around the world. So we continue to believe that in spite of the setback, it is critical for Nigeria to adopt legislation and to use the legislative route to ensure and to guarantee and sustain uh, the, the participation, the equal participation of women in politics. So we share with the speaker and others today the belief that having more women participate in decision making is the gateway to a more peaceful and prosperous Nigeria, including the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals. The bottom line is that having more women in politics benefits everyone. It is not about men versus women. And although Nigeria is an important leader in Africa, it does have one of the lowest levels of female representation in politics in the world, as mentioned by my colleague Comfort. And there's so much more that Nigeria can achieve by simply including women as part of the team by providing them with an equal opportunity to shape the country's future at the political level. Now, of course, some progress has been made, but as we've heard tonight already, there have been a few setbacks recently, um, such as the gender bills that recently failed to pass in the Assembly. But at the same time, this brings new inspiration. We see the passion of women standing up for the rights at the gates of the National Assembly and at state legislatures peacefully demanding better from their elected representatives. 
And I met with some of these women leaders today. And, you know, one of the messages that they told me that, that really stuck with me all day long was that they wanted to make sure that elected representatives understood the pain of what women and girls are going through every day. And the pain that they've gone through every day for decades. We look forward to walking alongside the government of Nigeria, UN Women, civil society, and other development partners to realize the shared goal and build a more equal and inclusive future. And we start this tonight. The five gender amendments proposed in the constitutional reforms process are very pertinent. The indigenous shape bill to allow women who are married to an indigenous of a state different from her state of origin to stand for elections in her husband's state. The citizenship bill to allow women in Nigeria to confer citizenship rights to their foreign spouses in the same way that men are able to do. The additional seats for women bill to create 111 additional seats for women in the House and Senate. The affirmative action for women in political party administration bill to allow a minimum of 35 percent representation of women in party administrative positions and the affirmative action in the appointment of ministers and commissioners bill to allow for a minimum of 10 percent representation of women ministerial appointments and as commissions these bills cumulatively will create a more level playing field for women to participate in politics and in public life. Nigeria needs all hands on deck to address its deep-seated development challenges. Evidence confirms that increased women participation in the political sphere and in the leadership helps to build safer and more stable societies and when women are in decision making position more inclusive and innovative decisions are made my speaker is a gender sensitive speaker and that's why he could sponsor the additional cp and i believe that it's because of his support that we're able to get to the voting level why well, i thought that the magic of the presiding officer who would get so get us to the passage of the bill proper. And uh, he also believes that we must, that he will continue to support the political participation of women, that he believes in it 100%, because he has two daughters, and he knows that if women are not included, that simply means that his two daughters will not be included, maybe in the near future, and they are daughters now. So he is saying that he is in support of women, um, full participation in politics. So on this note, he is saying that the women of Nigeria, that he is supporting you 100% and he will continue to do everything humanly possible as a presiding officer of Ninth Assembly to make sure that you get all you are asking. And on this note, he is saying that he loves you all. You continue to pray that all the men in Nigeria will support him to make sure that all your aspiration is met. In Islam, is a rights-based and gender-concerned religion. It granted women and girls rights. It also prohibited cruel and harmful practices against them. This is evident in the noble and holy Quran and the prophetic tradition of the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, and I quote, women are symmetrical partners of men. This partnership is at both matrimonial 
and public levels. In addition to several verses in the Holy Quran, one of the longest chapters in the Holy Quran is dedicated to women and girls. So why not Nigerian constitution? Hence, he urged the distinguished senators and honorable members of the National Assembly and members of the general public to support the bill and pass them. They are in our own interest and the interest of our country.